So I want to talk you through some of the features of the OPZ and tie it into my workflow making soundtracks for video games. Okay, keep that in focus. You doing it? You doing it? So the OPZ is the latest offering from Teenage Engineering, uh, the guys who brought you the OP1 and the pocket operators and a whole bunch of other really cool stuff. So the OPZ is a pattern-based sequencer, like a step sequencer, similar to a whole bunch of other products and software packages built around the concept of creating music loop by loop. And that's how I started making music with computers. I was using pattern editors way back in the day of a very different kind. So the idea of independent track lengths is a total game changer for me. And coming from a sequenced audio background as opposed to a rendered audio background, since we've had plenty of computing power and plenty of RAM at our disposal, the idea of bothering with uh, MIDI-based or trying to save space with audio has been seen as redundant. Like, we'll just have, let's just record an entire orchestra, then why not? Um, there are pros and cons to both approaches, but for me, the idea of having independent track lengths changes everything and reboots the conversation around having sequenced audio as opposed to rendered audio. So I want to talk about that a little bit in detail. I put some stuff up on Instagram. Uh, I was jamming on just one pattern the other day. I need to come up with better titles for my music, but this was sketch track seven. And it was essentially just one pattern, but because each individual track had its own separate length and all of the components to that were musically compatible, there were almost it's seemingly infinite variations of the same pattern. So I can put in my drums, separate drum elements. They'll never sound the same twice. And that to me has tremendous value in a game soundtrack environment. Uh, when people are designing games, they have set level music in mind and they want maybe 10 tracks or 10 loops to fit those levels. And typically the brief reads, uh, can you make a two minute loop or a one minute loop um, and don't make it sound too repetitive, but that's what we've got the budget for. Um, but having independent track lengths changes that considerably because with the same amount of work, you can have exponentially more variation in the music. I've got a quick mathematical quandary for you. It's to do with the OPZ and the fact that um, you can set independent track lengths. I've just been trying to recreate um, like a visual to show how infrequently these events are going to line up. What we're looking for is difficult to find the right words for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a factor. Like the, you want to find the smallest number where 7, 16, 45, 56, 80, and 64 are factors. Right. I mean, if you multiplied all those numbers together, that would give you sort of yeah. one point where they definitely would, but it's not necessarily the first one where they would. Is that is that true? Yeah, I think that's the case. Common multiples. Here we go. So, I mean, I, that's one thing that I can assert as being true like it, uh, after 448 loops um, four of these elements will be in sync but two of them won't be why did you have to pick such random numbers dude <laughs> well like you like I thought the primes were gonna help like I wanted to make it as um, well I, I was it wasn't I, I could have made this even more unpredictable but I just thought let's keep it musical so um, yeah, well, yeah, you could have just done like 2, 4, 8, 16 and 64 and called it a day. Yeah, I could have just done some doof music as well, but you know. <laughs> i got to tell you though, like this is, yeah. um, to play this pattern through on, on one lap and just sort of get the general gist and hear the chords progress goes for 15 seconds. But to hear the exact same things line up again, you're saying it's going to be more than 5,000 times. It might be more than that again. Um, so, it would be... No, know, well, this is like... a button on your calculator for this sort of thing. No, no, this is getting into like that whole crazy cryptography stuff that I'm not very well versed in. Because that so seems to be all similar be sorts of mathematics. Could cryptographic key, is what you're saying. <laughs> Alright, so we need a... Oh. 
So I need to write under. I need to write a piece of software to do this. Seriously? Oh, I, dude, I'm sorry. Like, no, you don't need to do that. I um, think I think that's the way it needs to work. Like, the first number where 7, 16, 45, 56, 80, and 64 are all factors is mm-hmm. 20,160. 20,160 loops before they sound the same. Before those bars match up again, yeah. But if you take out the last number, 64, yep. it's 5,040. Okay, so without the lead instrument, it's 5,040. Um, okay, well, since you've got your calculator there, um, given that the bar approximately, just listening to it one lap through is about 15 seconds, um, can you multiply 15 by 20,160? Then divide that by 60 and then we'll have minutes. Uh, and divide it by 60 again and we'll have how many hours that is. That is 84 hours. 84 hours. Yep. In the effort it took me to make one loop of 15 seconds, thereabouts, I've made a piece of music that will last 84 hours before it sounds exactly the same again. Yeah. Okay, and throw into that the fact that some of those triggers are random notes as well, and I've effectively made an infinite pattern. Or a noise generator? (laughs) Well, I mean, if it was static or if it was just garbage cans and a blender, but no, it's not. It's, It's musically compatible and... So can I'm you not play saying I'm going to listen to it forever, but it's... Um, can yeah. I hear it? Can I hear um, it? It's get, yeah, it's Sketch Track 7 on my Instagram. Sketch Track 7 on your Instagram. Can you hear that? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. I was just expecting... You know, I'm not that quite avant-garde yet. Um, <laughs> but that's amazing. That's one pattern. One pattern that I could have... Um, I could have up to 16 patterns per project. And yeah, each yeah. of them could have this level of, you know, subtle variance in it. And then, before you know it, I've written a piece of music that is longer than the age of the universe. Cool. Thank you so much for helping me solve that problem. Um, it's going yeah, to make no my worries. video a little more satisfying than just saying, hey, music lasts, you know, hun-. my initial recording of this was like, hey, it lasts hundreds of times before it will loop, <laughs> but no, um, at least dozens, but no, it's 20,160, that's, that's really cool. So that coupled with random note events and the application of punch-in effects means that I can have, effectively, one pattern with different length elements, and I can jam on this for as long as the audience will let me. Um, and in a game soundtrack setting, the, yeah, instead of just doing a two minute loop, you could submit something like this that could last for you know, six, 10, 20 minutes without ever sounding the same. Um, and it's almost the same amount of work. So that's, I, I think this is a game changer for game audio potentially. Anyway, yeah, the few times that I have branched out and done strange time signatures, um, If it's not being weird for the sake of weird, there's a purpose behind it. So the hub music that I wrote for Battle for Volcano Island on the Game Boy Advance way back in the day, um, I have a look at the tracking information there. Um, I reduced one pattern from 64 lines, which would have been four bars at 4-4 time, down to 44 lines of code, which was one bar at 11-4 time. This was inspired by the end of race music in Mario Kart 64. Um, My mate Dave is big on music theory and he sort of encouraged me to uh, branch out and I'm glad that I did because um, functionally having the hub music which was revisited between levels, it made sense for it to not be predictable and not be too uh, boring. You want to get bang for your buck um, out of the two minute music loop that I had. So it was switching between 11-4 time and 4-4 time and it kept it unpredictable, it kept it interesting and that's something you know, that adds value to your music. So, uh, which brings me back to the versatility of this guy and 
what could be a rant on sequenced audio. So, although like any feature and like any ability, using it just for the sake of having it is not a great idea. There is no one quick fix that's gonna make all your music sound amazing. Uh, and, in, and for game audio developers, there is no magic bullet uh, or feature that's gonna make your music sound better than everybody else's. So implementing adaptive audio just for the sake of it can be a bad idea. Uh, and the idea of mashing up all your time signatures to make the music last longer could turn it into a horrendous mess. So this is just one tool used properly, could be amazing. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. I'm gonna be talking to game developers about this, but I just wanna plant the idea now um, and sort of share why I'm excited about it. Anyway, hey, it's Andrew, welcome to Beat Therapy. I wanted to have a little bit of a chat today about this guy. So yes, this is the OPZ from Teenage Engineering. I like it, you might. Um, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in another video. Thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed. I would love to get my count up. Uh, it means a lot, so thanks heaps. Have a good Christmas and see you next time. Thanks, bye.